everyone and welcome back. Today is going to be another spoil video. I just got back from watching Spider-Man Far From Home again, second time, and this time in 3D. So for those of you who have not seen the movie, cut this review off, go out and see it, and then come back. This review isn't going to be like most of my reviews I usually do. I don't even think I'm going to give it a rating at the end because there's kind of a lot I want to say. Like I said, this is a spoiler review. So here we go. As I said with my last review, this deals with Peter Parker and his classmates going on vacation to Venice, Italy and pretty much away from New York. This whole movie takes place, or a majority of it takes place in Venice, Italy and a little bit in the UK outside of New York. The way the movie starts off, you know, you got good chemistry between the characters. Tom Holland as Peter Parker plays a terrific Spider-Man. As I said in that, my other review, I could watch him forever as Peter Parker. He's the best Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, since Tobey Maguire. You gonna be the next Iron Man now? Well, no, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your jobs. What? Oh. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Look, keep up the good work. Because I am going on vacation. So you get a great build-up right when the movie starts. You get Nick Fury and Kobe Schmoder's character. I forget her name, in New Mexico, where they investigate all this destruction. And then Mysterio just pops up, and this is a really excellent way to actually introduce him. It does cut off, like, in the middle of the fight scene, this big giant creature just pops up. And they're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Samuel Jackson, Kobe Smolder's character, and Jake Gyllenhaal, he plays Mysterio, Quentin Beck. And he's like, you want, you don't want no part of this. He starts firing and then it just goes off. And then they get into this memoriam, which, spoilers for Avengers Endgame, they have a lot of that. So if you've not seen Endgame, I don't really recommend you watching this film. But they go through a memoriam of, you know, Captain America and Iron Man and Black Widow and Jarvis, all of them that has pretty much passed away in the last couple of movies, in the last couple of Avengers movies. And then it reintroducing Peter Parker and Zed, his friend, which was great, you know, he was funny in this. Zendaya, she returns as MJ, which, as I said in my last review, was a terrific MJ. I read somewhere where her name is, does not stand for Mary Jane. It doesn't really say, but she's just known as MJ. But I thought she was pretty feisty. She was... One of those that takes everything seriously. And I thought her and Tom Holland's Peter Parker made a great match. You look really pretty. And therefore, I have value. No, no, that's not I'm right. messing with you. <laughs> you look pretty, too. We got all these really cool choreographed scenes. The special effects in it was just awesome. The digital effects in it didn't look cheesy at all. Since my last review and since I watched it again, I've had time to think on this. It does take a little bit of time for it to actually build up to what the movie's trying to say. And, you know, Happy shows up, and he's pretty funny. You know, John Favreau returns as that character. And as I mentioned before, he's the one that actually started the MCU. He directed the first two Iron Man films. And he's been a big part of it. Not just directing, but he's been a big part of this universe since it started. So I'm glad they brought him back. I think he's one of the hearts of this universe. Who are you? I work with Spider-Man. You work for Spider-Man? I work with Spider-Man, not for Spider-Man. New plan. The movie goes on and you get the classmates, Peter Parker and his classmates, to Venice, Italy. They make that plane trip. And then that's when the movie really starts for me, I think, when they get out of the States. The sets and the look of this film was pretty good. I've never been out of America. Don't really plan on it, but, you know, I'm just saying. The way the movie made Venice Italy look and these, the UK, it was done pretty good. The cinematography and the lighting, as always, I've got to mention that. That's like a part of what most of us reviewers have to mention because that's like one of the heart and souls of filmmaking. So yeah, that was done pretty well. The music was really good. You know, it had that same theme song that Homecoming did. And then Quentin Beck, that's played by Jake Gyllenhaal, shows up. You know, other than that little small scene I mentioned to you, like right when the movie starts, you get to find out all about him and how he lost his world to these supposed elementals. And I say it like that because... He turns out to be the villain, and 
my friend I went with, he was smart enough to figure out on his own real soon, even sooner than me, because I've never heard of this character. And a lot of y'all know, I've mentioned this before, I'm not a comic book reader, so I wouldn't really know. I was kind of going into this movie blind, because I've never heard of Mysterio before this movie was made. So, you can't blame me that much. I mean, about the comic books, yeah, but... You know. But yeah, I've never heard of Mysterio before this movie came out, so I wasn't really sure if it was he was going to be a bad guy or a good guy or in between. So when that bar scene came up, and after they supposedly fought that last elemental that he was claiming, Jake Gyllenhaal's character shows his true color. And the way he played that off, he was your buddy. He was Peter Parker's buddy, and you thought you could trust this guy. But, nah. He went from being stable and just an all-around decent guy to, like, completely nuts in, like, one scene. And Jake Gyllenhaal, he played that off really, really cool. Like, I mean, it was, it was awesome the way he played that scene. I was like this the whole time. The movie went on from there, and he explains his evil plan, and they take you back to like the past movies. One character showed up that made like itty bitty small cameo in the others. And you find out that this guy Quentin Beck was in the background because it shows a scene from Civil War. A flashback scene from Civil War that dealt with the glasses that Peter Parker gets from Tony Stark. It goes on from there and Peter Parker realizes, oh, I just made a big mistake because he accidentally in the last fight with that elemental he tries to save his friends that was on one of those merry-go-rounds. Quentin Beck uses these devices that creates illusions, makes you see things that he wants you to see. It's a real mind twist. He plays with your mind a lot, this Mysterio character does. So he tries to save his friends on the merry-go-round, and his web touches one of those devices. One of those drones, that's it, drones. He touches one of those drones without knowing, he pulls it out of the way, and then he tries to save his friend, and then that whole scene goes off. So he finds out that that whole thing was a lie, was a setup for something that Mysterio wanted to do, which was not good. <laughs> you know, as I said, you find out he's a villain, and Peter Parker's whole world just falls flat. Because it's like, Tony Stark trusted me, and I gave this billion dollar equipment to the wrong person. To a villain who wants to smash up everything as what most villains does. So he realizes that and he starts suiting up. And as I said before, that whole black suit still wasn't a fan. Good movie, not a fan of that suit. Just didn't feel like Spider-Man. Just I wish they would have just stop it. He goes off and he finds out who uh, Quentin Beck really is. The movie just basically goes on with these mind-blowing action sequences. Especially when he gets to confronting Mysterio for the first time after he finds out who he is. And he just mind tricks him so much. The way they had that scene set up, and I watched this in 3D. The 3D effects wasn't bad. Now, I haven't really seen a 3D movie in like two or three years. I think the last 3D movie I've seen, I, it was both Transformers The Last Night and Spider-Man Homecoming. So, that was the last time I watched a 3D movie. I'm not really that big of a fan of 3D, but this one, I actually liked it. The way it was shot, the real 3D was done just perfectly. A couple of times I was like this. Whoa. The way the objects were just blown out at you. <laughs> it's just, it, it was amazing. It was, it was pretty amazing. Especially when Spider-Man would show up and he'd be swinging everywhere. I had a good experience. That whole scene with Mysterio mind messing with Peter Parker, it was creepy. There was one thing where Quentin Beck was uh, making him think that he was seeing Tony Stark's grave. And out from it, it was like a little zombie scene. A zombie Iron Man popped up. And I was like, oh God. Oh, that's freaky as hell. That's freaky. No, no. <laughs> but I liked it. it. It was really good. You know, in a freakish, freaky sort of way. Mysterio was no joke. Even though it was the first time me seeing this supervillain on the big screen and not knowing anything about it, I think that's why I felt the way I did about this villain. He was no joke. I think he was, like, probably the 
strongest, the most lethal, deadly foe that Spider-Man has faced. And I'm saying that knowing how Thanos was. So I'm going to skip through the end and just give you a little bit of a breakdown. So the end happens and once he faces how to beat Mysterio, the whole thing takes place on uh, near a bridge. Don't ask me what bridge. I forget what it was. Peter Parker's friends. Mysterio, of course, being uh, your typical villain, he wanted to kill them, you know, teach Spider-Man a lesson and all that, so they get trapped in the middle of all this chaos by having one of Mysterio's minions drive them on a school bus in the middle of like all the chaos before it actually starts. So that happens, and Mysterio is in, like, of course, out of harm's way. He, he wears this, like, little device, headpiece device with a glass case around it, not like what you've seen before, because that whole thing was like an illusion with the cape and all that. It was like headphones going around his head. He has control of all this other stuff. He was like just sitting on the sidelines like a Bond villain. <laughs> Spider-Man, after thinking that he sort of killed him earlier, Mysterio finds out that he's back and he's trying to mess up his drums, you know, stop all this madness. So, of course, Mysterio was like, nope. Yeah, I see him. I'm going to kill him. So, you know, all this action sequences starts, explosions, and Spider-Man trying to throw everything, like cars and bombs and stuff, at the drones, trying to get rid of as much of them as they can so Spider-Man can get to Mysterio. It kind of reminded me of one of those really hard video games. To get to the villain, you got to go through all these other obstacles, and that's what that reminded me of. All that happened, and then he finally gets to Mysterio. The final confrontation between him and Mysterio was pretty epic. Mysterio tried that mind control thing on him one more time, but he was strong at this time. So he, he started lunging at him and then all these weird shapes just started showing up and it turned black and stuff. But once he started conquering it and started beating up on those drones and zeroing in where they were at, it was on. And Mysterio was like right there. He's like, why are my drones working? Because you're in the middle of the kill zone. It's like, fire all of them now. Epic. <laughs> so he beats him and he saves the day and there's like two post credit scenes. There's one where he gets Mary Jane and he's they start you know swinging up in the air but unlike Kirsten Dutz, which that's one thing I could give Kirsten Dutz, she would be able to handle that a little better. You know swinging with Spider-Man up in the air. Zendaya's MJ was kind of like scared. She wasn't able to handle it as much as Kirsten Dutz's MJ did. But the first post-credit scene was a jaw-dropper. And I'll tell you why. First of all, let me say that Mysterio, the reason why I said that he was the most deadliest foe that Spider-Man has ever fought in my eyes is that he had so much contingencies, plans, nobody could have predicted this. He kind of reminded me of a supervillain version of Jigsaw. And, you know, they're back in New York. You see him on the one of the billboards or one of the buildings. I don't know when he actually did this. And it's one of those news things. But before Spider-Man got to him in their final confrontation, he actually appeared on the screen on one of the buildings saying that Spider-Man was the one that orchestrated that whole thing and killed him, Quentin Beck, trying to frame Spider-Man. And who showed up next? Blew my mind. This is what made my jaw drop. J.K. Simmons, who played J. Jonah Jameson in the Sam Raimi versions, actually shows up as the same character. What? And the second post credit scene, which kind of confused me, but I think I kind of get it. You find out that Samuel Jackson and Colby Schmoder's character wasn't actually them the whole time. It was the aliens, not the Kree, but the other types of aliens that was in Car Captain Marvel. The leader of the, the, the good aliens, I'm so sorry guys, I forget the name of what those aliens was called. It wasn't the Creed, I think those were the bad guys in Captain Marvel. But it was the others that uh, Captain Marvel and her team teamed up with to help them battle the bad guys in Captain Marvel. It was them the whole time. And you find out that Samuel Jackson, aka Nick Fury himself, the actual person was on this ship or boat or whatever it was, with the aliens, the good aliens, this whole time. He was still sending him orders, the good aliens that was pretending to be Nick Fury and his partner. He was still giving him orders and all, but 
you find out that it wasn't Ned the whole time that was with Spider-Man. And it kind of shows you, you know, what is he planning? What has he been up to this whole time? Which apparently was is commanding these aliens now. I don't know. Uh, apparently he's an alien leader now. I had a really good time in this movie. And like I said, I'm not really going to give it a rating or anything. I'm just going to say it was a really fun time watching it. Especially in 3D. It's just something for any Marvel fan to go see and be enjoyed because there's plenty of action, plenty of story, you know, good storytelling. It was just a fun ride. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share, and like my videos. That's my channel. Stay tuned for more videos and reviews coming soon to a computer screen and a cell phone near you. Peace the rip out.